You're watching the CP News Weekly video brought to you by Erner Berry's Reporter Magazine, which is out now. The latest issue is packed with great stories, including a food trend forecast for 2021, a look at how restaurants have introduced new design concepts as a result of the pandemic, the scoop on Maui's new Captain Omega line, and much, much more. You can read a digital copy of the magazine by visiting ernerberry.com slash reporter. I'm CP News Managing Editor Amanda Buckle. And I'm seafood market reporter Lauren Castiglione. In our top story of the week, another plant in Alaska shut down to a COVID-19 outbreak. On January 22nd, Westward Seafoods, the owner of Alaska Seafoods in Unalaska, temporarily halted production after a cluster of positive cases. Trident Seafoods plant also remains closed as the outbreak now includes 135 workers. About 700 workers are said to be quarantined and the company is said to be stockpiling medical supplies, including ventilators, in case weather grounds air ambulances. Unice, on the other hand, reported substantial progress towards containing the outbreak at their facility, with a second round of mass testing of their workforce showing promising results. Meanwhile, salmon processing facilities in the Los Lagos region of Chile have reopened after briefly halting operations due to a spike in COVID cases. Salmon Chile partner companies came together to adopt a plan to face the current situation, which included pausing their operations to carry out PCR tests on workers. Those who test negative were the only ones allowed to re-enter. Intensive sanitation of facilities and other spaces are being carried out, and the industry even plans on putting together 2,000 sanitary kits, as well as 500 food boxes, to hand out to those in the region who have been impacted by the coronavirus. In other news, Premium Brands Holding and FNC Holding Limited Partnership, representing a coalition of Mi'kmaq First Nations, have officially acquired Clearwater Seafoods. The $1 billion deal received overwhelming support from Clearwater's shareholders. Colin McDonald, chair of the board of directors of Clearwater, said in a statement that he was proud of the deal and confident it would enhance the culture of diversity and sustainable seafood excellence that Clearwater is known for. McDonald added that he's proud to turn over the legacy of the company in Atlantic Canada to new ownership and the existing management team. The deal gained approval under the Competition Act last month and was finalized by the Supreme Court of Nova Scotia last month. And finally, January to November 2020 lobster exports to China totaled 12.5 million pounds, a 130.4% increase year over year, and outpacing the six-year average by 14.1%. The live export market of China was derailed back in July 2018 when China placed heavy retaliatory tariffs on U.S. lobster imports. Up to that point, year to date from January to June 2018, exports totaled 11.7 million pounds and was on track for a record-setting year. Once the tariffs took effect, exports to China in the, fo the following year plummeted by about 68%. The U.S.-China Phase 1 economic trade deal came into effect February 2020, and China announced that 696 U.S. products would be exempt from tariffs including 42 seafood products, one being live lobster. This led to the resumption of normal trade with China with peak exports occurring in October. Thanks, Amanda. Now be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comtel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. And don't forget to listen to a new episode of the Seafood News Podcast released on Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes every week. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel below. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and you? See? Well... well.